Hey, everybody. This episode of Skype Sanctuary was supposed to go up a little bit earlier. Well, a lot earlier. It was recorded back in late, late November. But I ran into a few technical problems on my computer, and I had to fix those before I could get this out. So, it's finally here. Enjoy this episode of Skype Sanctuary. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Skype Sanctuary. It's me, Skyler, and I have some special guests with me from a website you may have heard of in the Sonic fandom. It's the one and only Sonic Retro. With me, I have a couple staff members, people who run the site around. If you guys can list yourselves off in order. Well, this here is Bartman3010. I am staff writer on Sonic Retro. I would be GeneHF, that guy who writes on the front page and says things on the forums. And I am Kinosu. I'm an admin. I do the coding stuff in the background that no one ever seems to realize is actually happening in the first place. Yeah, like most recently, for instance, when Halloween came around, I was just watching TV, had Sonic Retro at the side on my laptop. Then I hear some strange noises coming from my computer, and suddenly I see a bloodthirsty Sonic in my face. I wonder how that happened. Don't know. Apparently the server got possessed. Yeah, it got possessed again. It happens from time to time. Mm. Strange, isn't it? Well, anyways, you've heard Gareth talk about Sonic Retro a lot. He's mentioned how I'm such a retro fag, and I know a lot of people haven't been to Sonic Retro, so what we want to do is shed some light on what we're all about, because there are a lot of, a lot of misconceptions about the website, so we're here to tell you about the site. One of Sonic Retro's premier attractions is the wiki that we have. It's this yes. ginormous catalog and library of Sonic info. And now we have, more recently, Sega Retro, which is its own wiki devoted strictly to more non-Sonic properties and just Sega in general. So. But gross misinformation fact, the Sonic Retro and Sega Retro website is actually represented in All-Stars Racing Transformed. You know the level. Well, you know. <laughs> oh my god, Ken Balo for All-Stars Racing Transformed. Oh, definitely. He'll, oh, definitely. he'll, he'll replace that. Danica Patrick. Yes. <laughs> I think we put a petition for this right now. It'll beat every single one that's on there already. Yes. You know, as, as I have this sick feeling in my stomach that there's already something like that over on the Sega server. <laughs> <laughs> I would not be surprised. <laughs> I've, I've seen some some very disturbing things there. I'm sure most of Sega PR has there, and they just... And that's why every single Friday they have to ingest every single sweet they can. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think it'd be a lot of fun looking at all the terrible posters they have there. Oh, no, the, the one... And I've talked to Kelly about this. I talked to her with Scarred Son over at San Diego Comic-Con. We were talking about how, you know, how it's like to run the Sega blog, and she's like... You don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, and then so I'm like, oh, for example, you know, give me, give me an example. And she's like, well, you know how I make a post about you know, such and such games? Like, hell yeah, I make a post about hell yeah. You know what the first comment tends to be, at least on either the the post itself or on Twitter? Hey Sega, why don't you make this game instead? <laughs> oh, yeah, oh yeah, sure. Let me just get on that right now. Oh my god. In, in a way, that really isn't surprising. It's kind of depressing, personally, because it's yeah. just the amount of port begging that's been going on. Like, hey, Jet Set Radio uh, is now out for Android, which I think is amazing that it's running on my tablet, but everybody's just port begging for Sonic Jump on Android, you know. A game that, you know, it's, it's a mobile game compared to a console it's game. It's coming. Also, shameless plug time, you guys definitely should check out Hell Yeah, it's actually pretty fun. Or you know what, you can check out, if you want if you want Sonic Jump, go for Doodle Jumper. Yeah. But, I apologize for this, but rather than Jet Set Radio, I'd much prefer a port of Jet Set Radio Future. That's totally understandable, but... Yeah, that's, that's fair. Well, hopefully if Jet Set Radio succeeds, they'd go in that direction, but we'll see. Well, here's hoping, considering it's only ever been on one console, and a console that basically no one bought. Actually, to be honest, I actually I actually busted out my copy of Jet Set Radio Future after completing Jet Set Radio on my PC. <laughs> and I'm actually appreciating it more because I, you know, I'm not 
playing it like a traditional sports game, i.e. something like Tony Hawk, it's more like a platformer as opposed yeah. as opposed to like, oh you gotta do a bunch of tricks. Well it isn't a sport it isn't a sports game like that though. It never was. In a in a roundabout way we're just doing right now what the comments I was talking about are doing. It's like, oh yeah, so you know, Jet Set Radio Future. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's kinda of funny that Jet Set Radio came out around the same time as Tony Hawk's Pro Skater came out. And then when the re- when uh, they re-released Jet Set Radio for modern consoles, they also came out with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD. Like it's at the sa- around the same time as Jet Set Radio. Like that's timely enough. I don't know. Tony Hawk HD is. I was really high on it when it came out, but I don't really play it that much anymore. Uh, it really doesn't look like there. It doesn't really benefit from uh, the additional polygons and the one good track from Tony Hawk 1. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Some of the new songs are really good, though. And also the PC port is crap. That's unforgivable. I haven't played that one. It's basically stuck at one resolution. You can't configure the controls, and there's, like, a lot of these other issues with it. Like, it's not... It is clearly not made to be running on the PC because they basically just took the console thing and just hit convert to PC and did nothing else with it. Oh, um, dear. How do you like typing out your name with a keyboard's arrow keys, kids? Oh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So we were talking about the wiki or something like that? Yeah, yeah wiki. <laughs> what? <laughs> about I've that. I've heard of this thing before. When it came to, like, the Sega Retro Wiki, uh, when that first came about, I mean, obviously it was an April Fool's joke that uh, was somewhat real, <laughs> that uh, we were getting mm-hmm. rid of quote-unquote getting rid of everything Sonic-related and we're just going to become Sega-related but not Sonic, and everybody freaked out. Yeah, it was kind of blown out of proportion from what I remember. Everything on April Fool's Day is always blown out of proportion. Yeah. It wouldn't, but it, it wouldn't be an April Fool's Day at Retro without it. When, exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, when, it, when it first came out, I was a little confused as to what exactly could all go on a Sega-related wiki, and Mostly it was just the idea of, like, would third-party games on a Sega console be worthy of going on a con- on a, on a wiki? And turns out it does. And, uh, I, of course, since then I've tra- contributed things to the wiki myself since I'm not necessarily... I mean, you know, everything has been more or less well told for Sonic the Hedgehog. And then David the Lurker comes, goes in and fixes all the grammar and everything. But besides that... <laughs> yeah. Besides that... Um... Our, our wiki is pretty useful. I know a lot of people within the industry itself I do look at it every now and then just to get mm-hmm. some notes on the classic games. I'm just I'm just mesmerized by the fact that there's like a whole page on the math of Sonic the Hedgehog, like the whole like all the trig equations that go into having Sonic go through those loops is amazing to look at. Mm-hmm. Even with someone who's not, you know, technically sound with Sonic 1, like me, it's still really awesome to see how everything is put together and how much of a challenge it really was to get Sonic through the loop and other things like that. But a lot of people come to the wiki, you know, just to make sure they have everything fact-checked correctly, what have you. And it's a very, very, very reliable source, I swear. You're overselling us, please. I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> we actually lie left and right. <laughs> yeah, the wiki is really just a bunch of fan fiction. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if David the Lurker would actually push for fan fiction to be put on no. the Sonic Retro no. wiki. No. <laughs> I am exercising my right as an admin, even though David's an admin as well, to say no. <laughs> second, he's second in command. <laughs> if we do accept, well, not everything fan made is accepted on the wiki. <laughs> Well, things like really good hacks and fan games and older fan games for posterity's sake. I remember Sonic Mega Mix for the wiki entry for that. It's written like an instruction manual, which is which mm-hmm. also lends itself to be you know written in a professional prose. If I'm using that word correctly, probably not. But it it just looks it just looks very unique in that way. Like you'll also see like press button A and there's like a graphic for button A to be placed on there. Like it it just looks very unique and somewhat amusing to me. I hate to toot my own horn for this, but if you go to the Sonic the Hedgehog Extended Edition page, it actually is like the manual. It even has the starting up section, as in as in a Mega Drive nice. manual. 
The only thing that lends me a little to concern with opening up to fan games is we'd have to set the standard of what a fan game would be allowed on there. And there's quite a few examples out there of fan games that are not that great or they're clearly like first time or rookie endeavors so they kind of seem flash studio quality you see you say that you see you say that that we do need standards but in the same way hacks have obviously they've come a long way but there are some majorly amateurish hacks out there that quite frankly we don't have on the wiki and we won't that don't actually go into detail in the forum that their topic just get just disappears entirely if it's there at all um the older ones however that would seem that sort of way do have a wiki page again more for posterity than anything else so in a way it's it's very similar it would be very similar with fan games on there something like um before the sequel would be fine on there simply Mm -hmm. because of the level of quality of that game it's professional quality especially the soundtrack but um more amateurish games these days wouldn't get on there just because it doesn't match with what you could call today's standards. Mm-hmm. I'm just picturing in my mind that somebody makes this from hack where it's like the ultimate fan character where there's explosions everywhere and he goes faster <laughs> than the screen and it's a power up to make him like clip through the floor and there's this one move in the game it cra- it makes the game crash but you're not supposed to do it but if you know how to do it you know that you're not supposed to do it and that's how you play the game. You see you joke about these sorts of things but then you've got <laughs> this wonderful post that was just in the validation forum the other day. But uh, the less said about that, the better. I know, I know, but still, that'd be so funny. Somebody (laughs) make a ROM hack of that. Just make the most absurd... Like, here, his B move. See this? Oh, he's got your nose. That's a secret move. (laughs) (laughs) And that's how you kill motobugs. Another thing about the wiki is how we've cataloged all the prototype information. We have tons of Sonic prototypes, especially Sonic 2 and Sonic 3D and Knuckles Chaotix, among others. Crackers! Crackers, 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 crackers. Crackers? Crackers don't matter. This goes out to you, Jens and I. I I don't think we need to tell the story. Just let them find it. They'll they'll learn the story one day. Mm -hmm. If they get into the forums. Right. Mm. (laughs) That'll be somebody's validation post. I want to learn about the story. Can I get in? <laughs> I'm pretty sure even if you ask Jinzano, he'd be like, what? <laughs> yeah. I don't remember this. <laughs> yeah, actually, one of the ways that Sonic Retro came to be was from one of the prototypes that was found over 10 years ago now. Longer than 10 years ago now, God. Yeah. Oh, it still feels like yesterday. No, it doesn't. <laughs> doesn't. <laughs> Finding a hidden palace zone and then everyone trying to restore it back into their game. Yes. Yes, and then we managed to. A lot of us did actually manage to do that, and we were all mm-hmm. so proud for it. And then disassemblies came out, and people can do it in five seconds flat. Right. And then comes the fun part. Cool, how do I finish the level now? <laughs> oh, that's up to you. <laughs> that's up to you. It's kind of your job there. You're yeah, putting you, it in. You, 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 d- you finish Act 1, and then you design your own Act 2. Have fun with that. Yeah, and so far, there has never been a good Act 2. Or an Interact 1, for that yeah. matter. Ezreal kind of came close. His uh, act two is not. I his his I, act two is not that great. I don't know. I no no offense to him. I really don't like his level designs at all. A uh, quick history about this prototype we're talking about. Back in 1992, when God. Sonic Two was coming out, there was a toy fair in New York, and according to Mr. Yuji Naka, uh, the cartridge for that game was stolen. So that turned up a number of years later on a Chinese website, and a gentleman named Simon Y found that ROM, thinking that it was just a regular Sonic 2 ROM, but... I thought he found the cart itself. Yeah, he did. Really? Didn't he? F- I could have sworn he did. You're not saying that in quotation marks, by the way. He found the copy of Sonic Well, you know... I could have sworn he was the one that found the cartridge, because he's the one that got it from the Super Mario yeah. Drive. Yeah, and he when we had pictures of the card itself too. Yeah. Well, I guess I should have paid more attention to the Sonic Retro Wiki. God. Huh? Huh? <laughs> huh? I, I, th- I think we might have to push you back into trial member. Oh, yeah. Sorry, guys. Well. You, you need to pass the old quiz that we shut down. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the end of the podcast. <laughs> Tune in next time when I get fucking reevaluated. <laughs> <laughs>
I will guide you through the reevaluation process. Well, we don't think your post was that high quality. Could you change your username, please? Yeah, I mean, this Ben Kalo video was funny, but it just wasn't that good. I mean, Sega of Antarctica, sure, but why not Virgin Islands? Yeah. Or Finland. Or what about Benelux? I'm still not validated yet. I'm very upset about this. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, you need to write a good post. Is well, the problem is, you, I, I think you forgot to read the guidelines again. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. But, well, here, I have this little sprite sheet of a fan character. Let me tell you about him. He's got, like, this magical attack that when you get 16 Let me completely ignore count. your validation post. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, but that but, that is but he, not. He can he can use chaos control with the soul emeralds. That's that's, that's impressive. Yeah, I'm sorry if any person actually does do that sort of thing, and I think we actually had one of them today that did something similar where they were mentioning their fan character. That really is something that isn't going to go down well in your post. We're not looking for fan characters. We're not looking for fan art. We're not looking for what your ROM hack is, what your game is. You want to know about you, basically. What we're looking for is basically. A paragraph, one or two paragraphs, just about you in general, what you're going to bring to the community. You know, you know, nothing too seriously detailed. Nothing to. We basically just want to know about you as a person, and basically just to make sure you're not the sort of person that is just going to basically troll or just be silly or just do absolutely just bring absolutely nothing to the community. Exactly. What we have at Sonic Retro, for those who haven't been to it before, we have a validation process. You can't just sign up on the forum and just suddenly become a member. Because when we let that fly, you know, we let a lot of the a lot of the bollocks into the mix. To sound British, <laughs> a lot of the bollocks into the but... mix. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we have a validation process. You sign up, and then we have a special forum for you. Just tell us who you are and what you can bring to the site and the community and all of that. So if we let you pass, you're not out of the woods yet. You have 20 posts, sometimes less if we like you, to basically show us what you got. And if you do well enough, then you're a member. Congratulations. It really is not hard to become, uh, to actually get through the validation process. Just m one big important point, read the guidelines. So many people skip over the guidelines, and it's noticeable. It really is noticeable. We don't want you to skim through it. We actually want you to read them. One thing a lot of people tend to do is there are three main... It seems like there are three main points in the guidelines for you to follow. Don't use them as, as actual points within your post, as in point one, point two, point three, and then answering them as, as in a QA. and a It actually mentions that in the, in, in the guidelines itself. It isn't exactly an essay. Like I understand how where people get the writing mentality from of doing that. They kind of just write like that at school, or that's how they're used to writing. So it's like, oh, they just want me to list it like this. Well, boop, boop, boop. Here you go. Well, no, no, it's more just like, hey, you know, this is who I am. We want to know that you're actually a person. Yes, not a bot. Yeah, so just all you have to do is just be cool and you should be fine. And even if like if you're in the trial stage and you're not sure of what to do yet just lurk for a while well there's one thing I, w I do want to bring up a little bit uh, I see it in some posts it's I, I know people because they don't really have too much to say they think that oh Sonic Retro clearly you need to be some sort of hacker or you need to have a game edit like, sure I mean that if that'll help you out I'm not sure why not but you don't need to know how to hack I don't know how to hack <laughs> I, I don't just know how. To, I just know how to write things and take pretty pictures and uh, report the news in a way that won't cause people to fire napalm bombs all over the place. <laughs> I see a lot of people posting like, "Oh, I just want you know, I if I joined Sonic Retro and made a member, I would like to be able to contribute to a discussion with worthwhile opinions and you know help people out wherever I can." Well, that's great and all, but that's kind of expected on a forum because forums are places for discussing. So yes, your opinion's going to get shared. Whether it's a valuable opinion, that's your opinion. <laughs> the TLDR of this is read the guidelines, look at other people's posts when the topic's locked and they've been made a member, and just write about yourself. We want to know about you. We don't want to know about your life's accomplishments. Yes, yeah, it's great that you're a straight-A student at such-and-such such high school, but uh, 
not that interested. What would be in that. a good example for a good validation post? Like just just be just like have like a random conglomeration of like what you know what you know what things would be a good quality. I mean, oh I'm not god, saying. you've put me on you've put me on the spot here now. Um. <laughs> just cite just cite one example. Then. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Asking the hard questions. I don't know really actually at this point. Um, it 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 kind of actually depends on the person. It and it also depends on exactly what it is about the person. There's a certain writing. It's not really a writing style. Um, a lot of people seem to think that it's one or two. Par- it needs to be one or two paragraphs long. Some people need to think they need to write there. Uh, like four or five paragraphs long it depends on how you come across as a person if you come across as a personable person you could in a way you could write about what you like hey, yeah we did accept that we did accept that one guy who was like I'm an ostrich validate me what <laughs> I think this was before my time what uh no this was a couple yeah, months we ago had... wasn't it <laughs> oh yeah it was pretty recent <laughs> weird like he was, he was just so charismatic. He's like, "I'm an ostrich. You should validate me." And we're like, "Okay." <laughs> that doesn't mean you guys can go do repeating that. That was just a one-time thing. Yeah, don't expect to be getting through with. And that. also worth noting, yeah, don't, you know, don't, we don't have that many people that are available to approve this stuff. So it will take time for people to go through the validation process. So patience is also another factor. And mm. if, so patience, de- mm-hmm. patience, definitely. Unfortunately. Uh, the majority of us who actually do do the actual validation do have full-time jobs. So if you make a post during the day, and also remember, because it's the internet, it's a worldwide thing, we're not around all the same time in your time zone, we do have full-time jobs all the way during the day. I do not have access to retro, so I only really go on in the evening, and especially I only go on the validation forum in the evening. So if you make something in the morning, do not ex- uh, and it's GMT, do not expect something from me have a look at it until uh, at least until the evening how dare you take this job for free I know it's <laughs> terrible <laughs> well you know, pe- the people who are invalidating if they really do want some attention they could go onto our IRC server at badnick.net and join Pound exactly. Retro. but the only thing is the only thing is I always see like I see some people and I'm not going to say always because that actually would be a gross exaggeration but I do see people go in that are like, hi, you know, I'm new. I just did a validation post. And it's like, okay, that's cool. And then they just start only looking for the admins. And it's like, guys, don't do not do that. Yeah, I mean, that's, one, that's not how you again, do it. They, they, they are working, so they're probably not there a tip, anyway. A, yeah. a typical good validation post, right? Who you are, maybe what your current job is, what your current course is at university or college, the interests that you think will um, be of interest to us at Retro. Don't, it, not just Sonic and video games, other interests as well. It might be computing in general. It might be they have an interest in art or music or programming in general. Um, it might be that... Underwater basket weaving. It might be basket weaving, exactly. Um, I'm sure there's one or two people that have an interest in that, Gene. Yep, there actually have been quite a few. Hmm. And we have the strange few that do enjoy wrestling, right, Skylar? Oh, what? <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> uh, you might want to write about okay. Let's say you do have a hack or you have something along those lines. You might want to write one or two lines about it, but nothing extensive, and just try to come across as if you know how. If you go to college or if you go to university or if you're at school and you have those times, you know you've got a gap. You've got to go introduce yourself. Just something along those lines. Make it so you know you come across. You're trying to be friendly. You're trying to let us get to know you. So that's generally what we're looking for. Again, it doesn't have to be an essay, it, but it does have to be more than just two or three lines, and definitely not point, 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 point. All right, all right. Let, let's get to the real heart of the matter. Green eyes. <laughs> oh God. It's all oh, about the green eyes. Oh my God, they ruined it forever. Ah. I I hate to be a party poop, but I really don't care about the green eyes. <gasps> How are you, an administrator? What are you doing? I, this this is why I just make fun of everyone who thinks we honestly care about the green eyes. Here's here's a little uh, FYI, guys. That was only like. Five people being really vocal about it. The rest of us were like, okay. I mean, we can edit it later, I guess, but it's not that big a deal. 
one thing you'll find out about retro very quickly one well two things one there's a lot of in jokes and two all the things you normally hear as complaints that the sonic community do we do complain about it but we complain about it in the most sarcastic manner possible a lot of people say that we complain about everything that's happened after 1994 what do you guys say about that that's not true it's 2001 <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a cranky old man. I'm just so jaded about everything in life. We're, we're all doomed. I mean, the rapture's coming next month. I mean, what more do we have to live for? Yeah, I mean, we find no <laughs> redeeming qualities whatsoever in any Sonic game that isn't on the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive. I mean, Excuse me. L- let me just add back to the whole 2001 thing. Because if we hate anything after 1994, that means we hate Sonic R's soundtrack, and we definitely don't. Oh, right. That's correct. That's the one exemption, though. I unironically enjoy Sonic R, even though I know it's a bad game. Yeah, it's it's really weird. It's one of those bad games that everybody loves, and I love it, but I don't know what it is. It's just Sonic R. Well, once you find out how to actually use the shoulder buttons to actually turn properly, it actually makes it a lot more enjoyable. Yes, yeah, really a lot does. of people a lot of people really yeah, don't know it, that. It goes from root canal to just getting a cavity filled. Yeah. I still <laughs> fall through the floors. It still doesn't stop me from playing the game. Falling through the floors in a Sonic game? What are you talking about? Well, that's 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 Metal a feature since Sonic running 3. in circles. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, to be honest, I've fallen through the floor in a game as recent as um, the first All Stars Racing. I already I already complained about Transform, but that was the Wii U version. PS3 version's been dandy. Mm-hmm. 360 has been fine for me. Yeah, PS3 has been fine here. I think I actually prefer the PS3 version to the 360 one, but... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Fuck Transform. That's right. I'm sorry. We're, we're oh, yeah, that's oh, yeah. right. <laughs> Ugh. How, how dare they? How dare they not release classic Sonic in that game? Ah. Uh. Why Sonic in a car? In terms of hating everything about Sonic, like, there's... I mean, I've grown up having both a Sega and a Nintendo console, but, you know, if you look at some of the other stuff that Sega's done, or even Sonic Team... You, you've you got a fair mix of things that were bad and good. Like, uh, you know, all, you know, good. obviously a lot of people tout the Dreamcast for, you know, for being creative and imaginative and fun to play. Even even if you go to, like, the Sega Saturn when the PlayStation was the new, new hot thing, like, there's still a number of games on the Saturn that were still nice. And I don't know why people think that, you know, we hate everything all, all together. Like... It's just a, yeah. I guess it's just an issue of like, you know, things could have gone better, and in some cases, you know, there were just times when, you know, you know, they could have not taken a shortcut, especially for games like, you know, Sonic Adventure or Sonic Adventure 2. Mm-hmm. Because we really don't hate everything. I, I stress everything. But um, the thing is, you know, you had Sonic 1, 2, 3, etc. There weren't a lot of flaws to pick out, and when you did find them, they were really cool. You know, looking through the ROMs and stuff, finding all the secrets. Wow, this glitch is awesome. But then you get to, say, Sonic Adventure. You you have some cool glitches, like getting Knuckles into, you know, Emerald Coast or whatever. But then you find the lip syncing, the reused animations. It's not that great of a game when you compare the two. They definitely have a harder time standing up compared to something like Super Mario 64, which redefined... 3D platforming for for everybody. Like, even game designers who've made games uh, like Crash Bandicoot or Bubsy 3D even were like, oh, as soon as they saw it. To me, it was more that Sonic Adventure... I mean, come on, I, back in 1999, I sold my N64 and about 8 to 10 games just to get a Dreamcast and Sonic Adventure. Right, because so, back in the day, Sonic Adventure was the shit, you know, but... Yeah, and then, you know, I went back to it throughout the years. I go back to it every now and then. It's still, it's, it's still enjoyable to go through, but it's not aged particularly well. You can see, like, oh, this is kind of rough. Yeah. I mean, I do like that the level design does let you get a little creative. Like, for example, the U-Bend at Emerald Coast Part 2. Mm-hmm. You can take the U-Bend if you want to, or you can be awesome and just say, screw that you, Ben, I'm going to cut right across and skip <laughs> about 15 seconds of the level. Right. <laughs> or you could just memorize the layout of the air, Windy Valley 3, and most of it, you find that the track repeats itself, and you could just skip whole portions of it. I'm kind of proud that I have a 148 time in that one. 
the other thing with Sonic Adventure, with each new release, it just gets worse and worse. I mean, you have <laughs> the the GameCube release was fine, you know. The yeah. mo- the mo- well, I I know, I know. The models were I did, I like the Dreamcast models a lot more, but well, no, for me, it, it's more that they did fix some bugs. That's great. Yeah, but they introduced a whole lot more. But that's just something else. I think that Sega was at a really rough point at the time. Well, I don't know. To me, they became more apparent as they released it on PC and then ported that PC version to the 360 and then ported that 360 version back to PC. I mean, they took out a lot of the original bugs, but they just gave them a lot of new ones in exchange for it. So, I hate everything! Here's something. The one thing, although... Okay, the adventure games haven't aged that brilliantly, but the one thing that will always I will always remember about it is I'll always remember having Sonic Adventure and the frame rate on the Dreamcast wasn't that brilliant. It never was. And then right. you go play Sonic Adventure 2 and all of a sudden everything is just so damn smooth. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. The actual change in a frame rate on the Dreamcast version was amazing. Mm-hmm. That was one of the improvements that I liked about the GameCube release of SA1. It wasn't stable, but hey, 60 frames per second at the time, at times, so... Exactly. It was the first time played it at that sort of frame rate. Not gonna lie, when I first played Sonic Adventure 2, I did get a nosebleed. Wow. <laughs> I don't really? know how, if it's, how it's related, but... <laughs> like, like, I, was, like, I was just sitting there, I was playing the game, great. I take a break, I go over to the manor to look at it, and all of a sudden... Drop of blood on the manual. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. I don't know what caused it. I'm going to assume it was like, oh, wow, this is like 60 frames. Oh, my mind. My mind just liquefied into goo and is coming out of my nose. It was a 90s commercial <laughs> in your head. <laughs> oh, man, the blast processing yes. so hard. Oh, blast processing oh, is just yes, my city mind. Escape. <laughs> well, here's a fun little fact. The first level of Sonic Adventure I ever played was actually Skydeck. That's kind of late in the Sonic campaign. Yeah. Mine was Windy Windy Valley. Mine was Emerald Coast, like everyone else who's normal. <laughs> My cousins brought around the Dreamcast, and they were stuck on Skydeck, and they wanted me to get past it, even though I'd never played it before. And I completed <laughs> it for them, and then right. I got a Dreamcast for myself. Like, here, you're a Sonic fan, you should know how to play this instinctively. Basically, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much how it is, so... Oh, no, all they, all they did was add a Z-plane. There's nothing I need to worry about. Yeah. Oh, I, I do remember one time in Best Buy, many years ago, I was walking by, and I saw some guy playing Sonic Adventure at a kiosk, and he was stuck on the tornado part of Windy Valley. And I just thought, oh, I want to help you so bad, but I don't want to be an asshole about it. I don't want to be rude and cut in. <laughs> but that's my story. He was just kind of standing by going, <laughs> like, oh, this guy sucks. <laughs> That's what nine-year-old me said, anyways. The only thing I think a lot of people take issue with is when it comes to Sonic Adventure 2 and every single bit of hate it's been getting lately. Because I understand, we all understand, Sonic Adventure 2, for a good part of the fan base now, is their childhood-defining game. Mm -hmm. They played that, they loved the story, they loved that Shadow was this mysterious character, he was kind of a jackass. He also came off as, you know, the the commanding force of the dark story. Which is weird because you think it'd be Eggman, but I think the main problem here is aside from the game, it's that's when Sonic started taking this downward slope. Some people call it that the stories tried to get a little too serious because now we have Eggman is suddenly a big bad terrorist. He wants to blow up the planet. I have this giant gun. Suddenly Metal Sonic. I we don't know how that happened. Just Metal Sonic decides to revolt, and then Sonic Adventure 2.5 slash Shadow the Hedgehog. And I don't, I'm not even gonna go into Sonic 2006. That's that's, a, that's its own podcast. <laughs> but basically, the whole Sonic story being too serious. Yeah, I, Sonic having a story, I, I can see some people wanting that. Generations did a great job with it. Colors also did a pretty good job. Probably need to fix up the humor a little more, but that's about it. Sonic 06 is basically they accidentally the whole game. <laughs> oh. Yes. You know, the thing about Sonic 06 is I'm just amazed that there are people out there who will defend the game. I'm amazed like, it got past testing of any sort whatsoever. <laughs> I heard a rumor that the testing staff got fired or something, but that was like way back in 2006. Yeah, I remember that rumor. Apparently, according to the rumor, the testing staff was, you know, going through the game, you know, checking out all the bugs and everything. So they came to, um, I don't know, one of the people in charge, 
and they said, okay, we have all this all this stuff wrong with it. And apparently, they got fired for you know bringing all the bugs to the attention of um, the higher ups. Really, they got fired for doing their job. Mm-hmm. According to the rumor, I kind of find that hard to believe, only because that's just you know why would they be fired for doing something that is technically their job? Like that's what, what I, could, I mean. What I could see happening was during that time they may have fixed some of those issues, but they were running down the wire. And what I'm assuming might have happened was that there could have been a hard drive crash where they, because like supposedly there were some uh, builds were, that were mo- much more further along than what we actually got, and the the demo, the demo itself yeah, the demo. plays better than the actual final mm-hmm. game. Not much, but still. And you can even see that on the on the HUD on the bottom that there's the working red bar thing and I've done a little bit of research on this because I'm the guy who's crazy enough to play Sonic Advent- uh, Sonic 2006 twice over both on 360 and PS3 get 100% both times and only on the PS3 just because I uploaded the save file on game FAQs you'll find it there and you can download it and never have to play the game for perfection again damn I wish <laughs> you did that for 360 because I had to bust my ass doing the same thing <laughs> uh, that that save file unfortunately no longer exists. Oh well. But I, can also... I told you, man, this is gonna take its own. This is gonna take its own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, six is just its own thing. Yeah. But I'm sticking with my story that there was a hard drive crash because uh, there was actually another game that Sega had uh, had kind of messed up when uh, they were trying to make like an en- English version. Uh, Magic Knight Rare Earth. There was a Sega Saturn game that was headed by a lot of. Uh, internal staff at Sega who usually do like RPGs like Fantasy Star then made like this really okay-ish mediocre Zelda clone with it and during when the working designs who was heading the the US version uh, basically they had such a hard time with it that uh, after they had finished the the after Sega had finished the game they actually lost half the game's data due to a hard drive crash and working designs actually went and recreated some of the assets for the game just for the US release, which wasn't exactly an easy matter. And of course, Working Designs also does their own thing where they make a bunch of alterations to the game based on what playtesters say uh, about the uh, the issue. For example, there's actually supposed to be more dialogue and spoken dialogue in the game, but they took it, they front loaded the game where it's mo- most of the dialogue is there so that the game would actually speed up because otherwise you would have to wait for the dialogue to finish before you could advance text, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, it, a lot of things could have happened, but since, you know, Sega's not willing to say anything about the matter whatsoever, we're probably never going to know until somebody, either from Sonic Team or from a, you know, an overconfident ex-Sega employee may speak up and say something, which mm. has happened, I think. You know, we're, we're probably not going to know what the actual story is for 06 anytime soon. But I do remember, like, back in the day, when I first saw what they were going to do with it, like, they were making Cover Sonic up. even Cover worse. <laughs> like, well, not even that, but, like, just making Sonic way m- even more serious than what we saw in, like, Sonic Adventure. Like, in this realistic world where it really didn't fit the character, in my opinion. And there was, like, all this talk of, like, oh, we're going to get rid of Tails, we're just going to make it it's about Sonic only. It's like, well, no, you don't need to reboot Sonic and make him this gritty, serious asshole character more so than usual i just i just like how they how they changed tales now from adventure one he had this whole character growth i know character growth in a sonic game yeah. <laughs> who cares about this stuff <laughs> but i liked how in adventure one they ba- they built him up like you know what i don't need sonic anymore i can kind of do things on my own great i kind of like that sonic adventure 2 he's back to writing Sonic. Up until Colors, where suddenly he's like, like, Sonic's like, hey, Tails, I just ran across the whole park and I did all this awesome smashing stuff. And Tails is like, okay, that's kind of cool. He doesn't care anymore. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, okay, that's how you should be. It's like, yeah, I've hung around with Sonic so long, he could do, like, awesome things. It's just like, yeah, okay. (laughs) Looks like I'm not needed anymore. The funny thing about Tails is his gameplay style got worse and worse as time went on. Because in Sonic Adventure, it was just, you know, traditional Tails stuff, flying around, going fast, almost as fast as Sonic, you know? And the breakdancing Tails. Come on, Tails! But then Sonic Adventure 2, where he was shoehorned in because everybody wanted him as a playable character, so he became an Eggman clone, which was just a mediocre Gamma clone, 
and that wasn't very good. I want to know. I want to know who thought it was a good idea to give him ring bombs. Mm -hmm. And then oh, you know, uh, real fast, Sonic Heroes. When you're playing as Tails solo, you don't use your twin spin tail attack. You throw dummy rings at enemies, and Seriously? they explode. In Heroes, you do that. Yep. Yeah. When say when you have Sonic and Knuckles on a switch and you're just running around his tails, that's what you do. Bloody hell! And then they made it even worse in 06 by giving him giant ring the, bombs that have yes. ring boxes. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! And you can't differentiate the fake rings from the real rings. Well, considering the normal rings just drop anyway, they're all fake dummy rings. <laughs> that shit was hot in Half Life of Have It Physics. We gotta have that in our game. Oh man. <laughs> Let's get this Cryware Man, engine going. I, 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 lo I love seeing cardboard boxes explode into outer space. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now you reminded me, when I first played 06, it was actually at a Game Crazy store, and the oh, first thing I wanted to check out was a two-player mode, and of course I was just playing a Sonic, the other person was Shadow, and by other person I mean I was just playing by myself, whatever. <laughs> but uh, the first time I hit the spring, <laughs> it sprung me into oblivion, and it took me like 30 <laughs> seconds before I died and respawned. My favorite thing about 06 has to be it's no use and being flung into space. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I just thought about this right now. I'm pretty sure the people listening are just... They're hearing us rail on about these games and who knows how much this is actually going to make the final cut. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> this is what being at Sonic Retro is all about. <laughs> Sonic 4. Oh yes. Let's, let's just go right oh, there. All right. Everyone's like, Sonic 4. Sonic Retro's favorite punching bag. I was a little hesitant about that, but... Ooh. All right. The thing is with Sonic 4, in general, it has potential. The music is good if it's given proper instrumentation, as mm -hmm. people who have listened to Skylar's stuff will know. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Um, yep. You can give that music, you can make that music good, you can make those levels good, you can make that artwork good, you can make the ideas good, it's just that the way they've put it together is terrible. <laughs> mm -hmm. And especially episode one, like, I am thrilled with the huge improvements they made to episode two. It's not there yet, it's not, you know, ideal Sonic yet, but it's a hell of a lot closer than episode one is, because episode one, I think we've exhausted it enough over the couple of years it's been out. You know, plastic assets, plastic-looking levels, the physics, Meow Mix Zone, all of that. Hey, let's stand on a loop. Let's all do that. <laughs> That's always fun. Hate is gonna hate. <laughs> if, you're, if you're like me, you don't necessarily care. I mean, the only real issue I have with Sonic 4 is that, obviously, it's split up into episodes, but we're getting them on a yearly basis for $15, and we're getting, like, maybe three or four zones. And of course, right now, nobody's playing online for Episode 2 for the two-player mode, so that feature is kind of a wash. So it's like, you know, Sega does not quite get how episodic is how episodic content works or how to make it marketable, and especially when you have, like, Episode 1, which was obviously not a strong starter, and then Episode 2 was not strong enough to not really garner that many new uh, users to check it out. I don't see how exactly Episode 3 is going to be this spectacular, grandiose thing. Like, I have obviously no hopes for it. But if it's cheap, I will get it. Oh, yeah. I'll be frank with Episode 3, I just don't see it happening at all. Because of the generation sh shift? I mean, Not even then, it's just... I mean, there, there's rumors for... It, 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 for, for, me, for me as well, because 4.2 four was a, a big improvement from 4.1 on, on several levels, and just basically design was a good example of it and while i'd like to see 4-3 built off 4-2 because 4-2 ended with a bang i loved mm -hmm. sky fortress sky fortress was what wing fortress should have been it's really what the whole game should have been that that basically that's just probably set off a few classic fans going well <laughs> how dare you say sonic 4-2 should be anything like the classic game oh my god and you're from sonic retro 2 <laughs> blasphemous <laughs> I, I love how we all sound like Kuwabara now. <laughs> Yu Yu Hakusho. With with Sonic Four, I don't see Four Three happening. I mean, I, I'd love to be able to see like the sales numbers. They won't release that. But well, Episode Two was released in February, 
So I've, you know, we're more than likely not going to get these new consoles until maybe like November or December at the latest. So even then, that's still at least enough time to release that content on the PlayStation Network, on Xbox Live, and if Microsoft and Sony are not willing to make that content backward compatible on their new systems, they are insane. I I don't, I don't even I don't even think it's that. I'm just looking at Sega directly. I not really that concerned about the current slash next generation of consoles. It's just, I beat the game 100%, barring that one thing you have to do where you have to play Tales Online 50 times due to oh my God. lack of online. Yep. Yeah. People playing. Yeah. So, by the way, we may have to do a community day about that because I did co-play it with someone and it was pretty I don't fun. want to buy the console. But, versions, but, well, you do it. But I digress. <laughs> I, I did the 100% thing, all red rings, all Chaos Emeralds, congratulations, I have no life, and nothing. Mm -hmm. No good ending, no to be continued, and yet... Yeah, that is one thing about it. It doesn't seem like there is going to be anything. When you look at the audio files, mm -hmm. there is remnants of something. Something that sounds like another ending. Something oh. that sounds like an emerald shimmering, and nothing. Nowhere to be found in the game. Who found that? That was a while ago. Uh, uh, it's one of the audio yeah. files. I'll have to... I think it's called like 9C or something. The, the file in question is called Mixed 63 Episode 2 Cutscene 9C 1210. This here is the file that Gene's talking about, by the way. That's to me it's like the most conclusive piece of evidence so far that shows that Sonic Four Three is nowhere near happening. Actually, a uh, quick note: Episode Two was actually released in May. I'm looking at the page for it right now. Oh well, that's still at least summertime. That's still a few months before, you know, maybe a month before E3, several months before a potential new console coming out. Right. Um, but, um, it was leaked in February, though, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. It's around February. I, I know episode one was leaked, but I don't think episode two was leaked. It was a very near final. See, it was leaked because if you bought it off of Steam, you got the executable, and you could just, when you pre-downloaded it, and you could just run it as is. Uh, okay. That's what it was. Right. Now, see, what mm -hmm. here's the theory. What's probably happening is that it's that's what's going to tie into the Mega Man Sonic crossover that Archie's working on right now as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> Mega Man Volna has to get off Little Planet. <laughs> yes. You know, he does the whole Dragon Ball fusion whatever thingy, and they are Mega Sonic. No. Mega Sonic Man. Mega Sonic Trigger... Using the Soul Emeralds, who knows Chaos Control to the tenth degree? Oh God! Because now we, because now we're measuring it in degrees. Wasn't that that fan game years and years and years ago? Oh my God! Here we go. I'm showing my age now. Sonic Infinity. Talking talk about Blazes, Mega Man, yep. Sonic Sonic, Sonic, Infin yes. Sonic Infinity, which is basically <laughs> a Mega Man X sprite edited to be Sonic. Ah uh, yeah. Oh yeah. I remember very, very vaguely. I was actually thinking of that the other day. That's that's how old, that's how old we are. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Sonic Four Episode Three, Mega Man Legends Three. No. Eh? No. Eh? Exactly. So it's no. never gonna happen. Capcom will make it all DLC. <laughs> I didn't realize they were gonna put Sonic Team in charge of it. That was their whole idea all along, wasn't it? <laughs> so Sonic Four. Legends 3. Well, we got that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got that one out of the like, way. I, I think this has shown that we don't hate everything. We've actually given a good amount of praise to some parts of Sonic 4. We're at least so. knowledgeable about what's going on. Then, and if we did hate everything, why would we be running a site called Sonic Retro and keep updating it constantly? Yeah, mm, exactly. You ungrateful monkeys. <laughs> if anything, Sonic Retro is Sundere for Sonic. <laughs> it's not like we like you or anything. God, Sega. It's not like we like Sonic. Ugh. Why did I grow up with that? Now I feel ashamed of myself. 
<laughs> uh, guess I better just update the website again. <sighs> Guys, my fan character shoots fire, but if you press the A button, he'll plant C4 on the Carnival Night Barrels, and you can blow them out of your way, so you don't have to do that stupid up-down trick again. None of you are getting revalidated. Oh, no. <laughs> I have a unique experience with the barrel, because many years ago, I was stuck on Carnival Night, but I, I don't remember exactly how it happened, but I think I glitched through the barrel yeah, with that exactly supersonic trick. Exactly the same thing happened to me. So, I just okay, whatever, I'll finish the level, and then every time I started up Sonic 3 after that, I would just start at Ice Cap Zone onward. <laughs> I cried when I couldn't get past that barrel. I, it took me maybe <laughs> two months to realize, after reading a strategy guide, you have to press up and down. I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> I'm sorry, in a Sonic game, you never press up and down to, alt to do anything with objects. Whose idea was it? I, I have the... The Brady Games one is it? No, no, not the Brady Games. The Brady Games one is not that good. It was another one. It was like by a guy named Simon Hill. The official guide. It looks like the Sonic 3 cover itself. I had that one, but since English is my second language, surprising, I was reading through it as a kid, and I'm like, how do I get past this barrel? And I didn't quite understand what the word simultaneously meant. <laughs> because it's a big word for someone who is six years old. <laughs> so... I just kind of figured it out one day. I'm like, oh. I don't know, guys. I was eight by then. I think we should blame Azuka for un yet another problem yes. since he's the cause well, it's, of it's, it's all Azuka's of them. Fault. You see, you say that, but at not this year's Summer of Sonic, but the previous year, Yuji Naka apologized for the barrel. Mm -hmm. He did. It was, it was the most amazing moment ever. <laughs> yeah, but he also apologized for Big the Cat, which was unwarranted. Like, yes, hey, this is come true. Come on now. D I, There's no reason to apologize for Big the don't, Cat. Don't be hating on Big. <laughs> Big's awesome. See, I don't, I don't hate Big the Cat. I would have apologized for Shadow the Hedgehog. That would have been worth an apology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Shadow to me was just there. Not, not the character. The game. The character. Yeah, yeah, story. yeah. Like I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. Well, the, it just, the character eh. got ruined, but at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. That that was from Heroes though. It started there because it's like, oh wow, the people really like this character. We killed him off. Um, Let's bring him back. He's well, Naka said he was sorry, so he left the company, and he drove off in his Ferrari. Yep. To the outrun theme. <laughs> Splash wave. No, it's got to be magical sounds shower. That sounds more wrong. <laughs> I was gonna say passing breeze, but ew, passing breeze. Yeah. You just hear, you just hear, turn on his car. He gets in the car. Yes. And we go from there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and on that note, I think we're going to wrap it up. I'd like to thank the three of you gentlemen for joining me on this Skype sanctuary. What a sausage fest. Anytime. Not a problem. <laughs> so, so where's the part where I have to beat up Mecha Sonic? I, I, it's a Skype sanctuary. Do I have to just hit this teleport? Oh, God! That was Gene, and for Bart and Kenosu, I'm Skyler, and this has been Skype Sanctuary. Thanks for listening. 